Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Saturday, March 24th, 2018. Today I'm going to recap last night's Sweet 16 action and pick today's Elite 8 games as well as recap last night's Women's Sweet 16 and pick today's Women's Sweet 16 games as well as recapping last night's NBA action and looking ahead to tonight's NBA action. Go over a big Major League Baseball injury that occurred yesterday and the 2017 NBA redraft. All right, to the Sweet 16 we go. In the Midwest region, one seeded Kansas defeated Clemson 80 to 76. Kansas moves on to the Elite Eight. Malik Newman put up 17 in the win. Gabe DeVoe put up 31 in the feet. Great season for Clemson comes to an end. Nobody expected them to be a Sweet 16 team, especially after Dante Grantham got hurt. And you got to give that team props. In the East region, one seeded Villanova defeated five seeded West Virginia 90 to 78 to advance to the semifinals. Jalen Brunson put up 27 in the win, and Daxter Miles Jr. put up 16 in defeat. Great four year one for the West Virginia Mountaineers basketball program. Javon Carter and Miles Jr.'s last collegiate games, it turns out to be. And like I said, that was an excellent run for that program. Bob Huggins should be very proud as the Wildcats advance to the Elite Eight. In the Midwest region, two-seeded Duke defeated 11-seeded Syracuse 69-65. Marvin Bagley put up 22 in the win. Tyus Battle put up 19 in defeat. As the Blue Devils advance to the Elite Eight to set up the dream matchup with Kansas. And on the flip side, great run for Jim Beheim's team. I don't think anybody expected them to make it to the Sweet 16. And Jim Beheim should be proud of what his team did this season, too. Upset in the East region, but not really. Three-seeded Texas Tech de- defeated two-seeded Purdue 78-65. It's not really an upset because many people thought that the Red Raiders would win, especially after it was announced Isaac Cost went in play. Big-time win for Chris Beard's team. Keenan Evans put up 16 in the win. Carson Edwards put up 30 in the feet. As Chris Beard has done it to Purdue again. This is the second time in three years that Chris Beard's team defeated Matt Painter's team in the tournament. Don't forget two years ago when Beard coached Little Rock, they upset Purdue when they were a 12 seed and Purdue was a 5 seed. And now Beard has his Texas Tech Red Raiders into the Elite Eight. Tomorrow's Elite Games... 609 TBS, 11 seeded Loyola Chicago against 9 seeded Kansas State. Loyola Chicago is coming off yet another improbable win, this time over the Nevada Wolfpack. Clayton Custer led the way in that game. Kansas State's coming off an excellent upset win over the Kentucky Wildcats. This should be a great and entertaining game. You know what? Sister Jean's just been the good luck charm for the Ramblers. And I think the Ramblers are going to advance to the Final Four, led by Custer. So give me Loyola Chicago to win the South region. And nobody, and absolutely nobody, saw that coming, let alone a matchup of Loyola Chicago-Kansas State in the Elite Eight. In the West region, nine-seeded Florida State against three-seeded Michigan. Florida State's coming off an impressive win over the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Michigan's coming off a blowout win over the Texas A&M Aggies after A&M similarly beat North Carolina the way it got defeated by Michigan. This was a hard call. I won't be shocked if the Seminoles find a way to win because they've been doing that all tournament long. Leonard Hamilton's an excellent coach, but John Beeline has the deeper team led by Muhammad Ali Abdul Rahman. So give me the Wolverines to advance to the Final Four. In the women's tournament, a couple good games in there for you. And I'll pick today's games as well. One-seeded Mississippi State defeated four-seeded NC State 71-57 in the Kansas City region. Mississippi State advances to the Elite Eight. 
Tiara McCohen put up 24 in the win. Kiara Leslie put up 27 in the feed. I had Mississippi State on the podcast. In the Lexington region, six-seeded Oregon State defeated two-seeded Baylor 72-67 as the Beavers advanced to the Elite Eight. Marie Gulch put up 26 in the win, and Kalani Brown put up 19 in defeat. As I mentioned, the Beavers advanced to the Elite Eight. Three-seeded UCLA defeated two-seeded Texas, 84-75 in the Kansas City region. Impressive win for the, the Laney Bruins. Jordan Canada put up 22 in the win, and Ariel Atkins put up 20 in defeat as the Bruins advanced to the Elite Eight. One-seeded Louisville defeated four-seeded Stanford, 86-59 in the Lexington region as the Cardinals advanced to the Elite Eight. Asaya Durr put up 24 in the win, and Brittany McPhee put up 15 in defeat. I had Louisville on the podcast. I had Baylor in Texas there, but I was wrong. So 2-2 two and two with the women's, 3-1 and one with the men's. The lone pick I got incorrect was Purdue because I thought they were deeper than Texas Tech, but I was proven wrong. Picks for today's games, you have... Cinderella, 11 seed Buffalo against two seeded South Carolina in the Albany region. South Carolina is just a better team. They're going to blow out the Bulls. Incredible run for the Bulls as the uh, Gamecocks, the Lady Gamecocks, will advance to the Elite Eight. Albany region, five seeded Duke against one seeded UConn. This is easy. UConn going to advance. Somewhat of a home court advantage there. So the Huskies. We'll advance to the Elite Eight. It'd be shocking if the Blue Devils were able to pull this off, let alone give them a game. In the Spokane region, four-seeded Texas A&M against one-seeded Notre Dame. I won't be that surprised if this is a closer game than expected because a and actually a solid team. Give me the Fighting Irish to advance to the Elite Eight. They're just better. And, the, and last but not least, in the Spokane region, Cinderella, 11-seeded Central Michigan against two-seeded Oregon. The other Cinderella in Central Michigan comes to an end as the Ducks advance to the Elite Eight, so give me Oregon there. All right, that's it for the Women's Sweet 16 picks. I'm going to go through the NBA action from last night, and I'll pick today's games. Um, Big win for the Indiana Pacers, 109-104 over the Los Angeles Clippers. Bojan Bogdanovic put up 28 in the win. Lou Williams put up 27 in the feet. Indiana is now 42 and 31. And the Clippers are now 38 and 34. In Indiana, nobody expected the Pacers to be in the conversation for a playoffs. And now they're on the verge of clinching a playoff berth. So good for Nate McMillan's team. Nate McMillan probably won't win the Coach of the Year award, but he certainly should be a top three finalist for that award. An impressive win for the Denver Nuggets, 108-100 over to Washington Wizards in Washington. Denver improves to 40-33. Washington drops to 40-32. Nikola Jokic put up 25-8-5 in the win. Bradley Beal put up 24 in defeat. The Cavaliers defeated the Suns, 120-95. Of course, the Cavs defeated the Suns. You knew that was coming. LeBron James put up 27 points and 9 assists in the win. Troy Daniels put up 20 in defeat. Cleveland's now 43-29. and 29. Phoenix drops to 19-54. and 54. The Timberwolves defeated the Knicks 108-104. Important win for the Timberwolves as they improved to 42-31. and 31. The Knicks dropped to 26-47. and 47. Carl Anthony Towns put up 24-13 and 13 in the win. Tim Hardaway Jr. put up 39 in defeat. The Knicks have been surprisingly competitive since Porzingis got hurt, especially at home. They've only gotten blown out a couple times since Porzingis' injury, which is impressive for them, considering that Porzingis is just a special talent, and the Knicks probably should be a bottom-five team in the league without Porzingis, which they're really not right now, considering how bad the Suns and the Mavs and the Hawks and the Grizzlies have been. The Knicks have been better than those teams since Porzingis has been hurt, surprisingly. And even the Bulls, for that matter. Um, the Raptors defeated the Nets 116-112. They improved to 54-19. Brooklyn drops to 23-50. and 
Kyle Lowry put up 25 in the win. D'Angelo Russell put up 18 in the feet as Toronto closes in on the one seed. The Bucks defeated the Bulls 118-105. Big win for Milwaukee. They improved to 38 and 34. Chicago drops to 24 and 38. Shabazz Muhammad put up 21 in the win. Del Valentine put up 20 in defeat. And the Milwaukee Bucks win a game without Giannis Adetokounmpo, which was impressive. Big win for the Oklahoma City Thunder, 105-99 over the Miami Heat. OKC improves to 44-30 as Miami drops to 39-34. Russell Westbrook put up 29-13-8 in the win. James Johnson put up 23 in defeat. Like I said, big win, an important win for the Oklahoma City Thunder. The San Antonio Spurs won their sixth straight game, 124-120 in overtime over the Utah Jazz. San Antonio improves to 43-30. Utah drops to 41-32. Career high in, for LaMarcus Aldridge with 45 points. He had nine rebounds in the game as well. Donovan Mitchell put up 35 in the feet, which was impressive for him. And that's six straight for the Spurs. An impressive win for the Boston Celtics, 105-100 over the Portland Trailblazers in Portland. They improved the 49-23. and Portland drops the 44-28 and as the Celtics cling on to that two seed still. Marcus Morris put up 30 in the win. C.J. McCollum put up 26 in the feet. Morris has been great for Boston these last couple games. He hit the game-winning three against Oklahoma City the other night, which propelled them to an important win that game as well. The Warriors defeated the Hawks 106-94. The Warriors improved to 54 and 18. Atlanta drops to 21 and 52. Stephen Curry put up 29 in the win, but he left the game because of his ankle. And Tarion Prince put up 20 in defeat. We'll see how Curry holds up as he as I mentioned left today's game. Tomorrow's slate, you have the Timberwolves at the Sixers. A fun battle between two very young and up-and-coming teams, the Carl Anthony Towns against Joel B, the two bigs. Ben Simmons in there as well. That should be a fun game. Bulls at the Pistons. Meh. Tanking team against the mediocre team. You have two tankers between the Suns and the Magic. You have the Pelicans in, against the Rockets, which is the best game on the slate. James Harden and Anthony Davis, two of the three contenders for the MVP. The Rockets should win that game, but I won't count Anthony Davis and the Pelicans there. Lakers against the Grizzlies. The Lakers will probably win that game as the Grizzlies have just quit on the season. And then the mediocre Hornets against the tanking Mavericks. So that's your slate for Saturday. Nothing fun other than... The Rockets hosting the Pelicans. Breaking NBA news on the podcast. The Warriors have announced that Stephen Curry sprained his left MCL. So he's probably out indefinitely. That's bad news for Golden State. Next, I want to go over a significant MLB injury. It just so happens to be in the same town as the Warriors, and that is, or the same area, I should say, and that's the Bay Area. So the San Francisco Giants, I'm talking about. Madison Bumgarner fractured his pinky finger today in a spring game, and he'll miss four to eight weeks. He should be back by June. That is a gigantic blow for the San Francisco Giants. It could possibly kill any hope of them making the playoffs this season. I'm spoiler alert for uh, my MLB predictions podcast. I am not high on the San Francisco Giants, even after the moves they made this offseason, even even though I do think they'll be a little bit better, but not a World Series contender like they might think or their fan base may think. Before I go, I'm going to do my NBA redraft. I did my NFL redraft on yesterday's podcast. Now I'm going to do the 2017 NBA redraft. How many picks are the same? How many picks are different? Here we go. Number one, Philadelphia Sixers. From the Brooklyn Nets via the Boston Celtics. 
Donovan Mitchell, point guard, Louisville. Yeah, I said it. Donovan Mitchell. That may come to a surprise to some people, but it shouldn't because Mitchell's been the best rookie this season other than Philadelphia's own Ben Simmons. But Simmons was drafted in 2016. Mitchell was drafted this year. And Mitchell is the selection here due to the fact that he looks like a franchise point guard to this point of the season. The Sixers would gladly take Mitchell to go with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. The actual pick was Mark Colfoltz, the point guard, shooting guard from Washington. So he's a combo guard, I should say. Two Los Angeles Lakers, Lonzo Ball, point guard, UCLA. Ball got off to a slow start, but has picked it up over the last few months. The Lakers should be happy with his development, and he's only going to get better. The actual pick, as I mentioned, Lonzo Ball. Three, Boston Celtics. From the Philadelphia 76ers, Jason Tatum, small power forward, power forward from Duke. Tatum started off his rookie campaign great, but has fallen off a bit. I believe the drop-off is just a rookie wall and that Tatum will get better. The Celtics still don't pass up a player that's often compared to Boston's legend, Paul Pierce. The actual pick, as I mentioned, is Tatum. Phoenix Suns, Josh Jackson, small forward, Kansas. Jackson got off to a slow start, but has picked it up of late and has played well on both ends. Jackson has potential to be a poor man's Kawhi Leonard, and I don't think the Suns would pass on that. The actual pick, Jackson. 5. Sacramento Kings. The Aaron Fox, point guard, Kentucky. Fox has been solid as a rookie thus far and still has room to grow as a point guard. The Kings don't pass on their point guard of the future. The actual pick, Fox. 6. Orlando Magic. Kyle Kuzma, power forward, Utah. Kuzma started off the season great, but has fallen off a bit. Like Tatum, I believe Kuzma has hit a rookie wall and has room to grow as a player. Their actual pick, Jonathan Isaac, small forward, Florida State. 7. Chicago Bulls. Laurie Markkinen, power forward, Arizona. Markkinen has been very good as a rookie and has great point, three-point stroke and can handle the ball very well, too. The Bulls don't do over this pick. As I mentioned, the actual pick, Markkinen. 8. New York Knicks, Dennis Smith Jr., point guard, North Carolina State. Smith has been solid for the most part of the season, can shoot the ball, and he's a solid passer. The Knicks finally would find their future franchise point guard with Smith here, in theory. The actual pick, Frank Nilakina, point guard from France. 9. Dallas Mavericks, Markel Fultz, combo guard, Washington. Fultz has barely played this season due to a knee injury. Let's Nick, let's not give up on Fultz yet, as Mark Cuban and the Mavs would bank on his potential. The actual pick, Dennis Smith Jr., point guard, North Carolina State. 10. Portland Trailblazers from Sacramento Kings. Jonathan Isaac, small forward, Florida State. The Blazers would be getting a possible steal here with Isaac, who missed the bulk of the season with an ankle injury. Isaac still has room to grow as a player, and he's shown some promise this season. The actual pick, Zach Collins, center, Gonzaga. 11. Charlotte Hornets. OG Anabi, small forward, Indiana. Anabi has been great for the Raptors this season and proved to be a steal. Anabi would have been a lottery pick had he not gotten injured in this redraft. The Hornets take their small forward of the future. The actual pick, Malik Monk, shooting guard, Kentucky. 12. Detroit Pistons. John Collins, power forward center, Wake Forest. Collins has been very good as a rookie for the Hawks this season is looking like a keeper. He would have been a nice pairing with Andre Drummond up front, and in theory, they don't make the Blake Griffin trade. The actual pick, Luke Kennard, shooting guard, Duke. 13. Utah Jazz from the Denver Nuggets. Malik Monk, shooting guard, Kentucky. With Mitchell off the board, the Jazz take another guard in Monk, who has recently fallen out of the Hornets rotation. Maybe on a team like the Jazz with a good head coach in Quinn Snyder, Monk would thrive more. The actual pick, Donovan Mitchell, point guard, Louisville. 14, Miami Heat. Jordan Bell, power forward center, Oregon. Bell has been excellent for the Warriors this season and should be starting for them at center over Zaza Pachulia at this point. In this scenario, the Heat pick him and start him at power forward next to Hassan Whiteside. The actual pick, Bam Adebayo, power forward center, Kentucky. 15, Sacramento Kings from the Portland Trailblazers. Bam Adebayo, power forward center, Kentucky. The Kings continue to add on to their collection of big men with the drafting of Adebayo. 
In this scenario, he comes off the bench like he does for the Heat right now. The actual pick, Justin Jackson, small forward, North Carolina. 16, Minnesota Timberwolves from the Chicago Bulls. Luke Kennard, shooting guard, Duke. Kennard is a solid three-point shooter for the Pistons this season, and he, he'd he be a solid bench piece for the Timberwolves if he got the playing time. The actual pick, Justin Patton, center, Creighton. 17, Milwaukee Bucks, Jared Allen, center, Texas. Allen proved to be a steal by the Nets where they selected him. Although the Bucks have a ton of centers, Allen would help the Bucks on both ends on the floor. The actual pick, DJ Wilson, combo forward, Michigan. 18, Indiana Pacers, Frank Nilakina, point guard from France. Nilakina has shown some promise with the Knicks, but I have him dropping to the Pacers due to the fact that this draft proved to be deeper than we thought. The Pacers get a steal here and perhaps their point guard of the future too. The actual pick, TJ Leaf, power forward, UCLA. 19, Atlanta Hawks. Terrence Ferguson, shooting guard, Australia. Ferguson has been really good for the Thunder this season, whether it's starting or coming off the bench. The Hawks snag him here to help themselves on the perimeter. The actual pick, John Collins, power forward center from Wake Forest. 20, Sacramento Kings from the Memphis Grizzlies via Cleveland Cavaliers, Denver Nuggets, and Portland Trailblazers. Josh Hart, shooting guard, Villanova. Hart has been solid for the Lakers this season and proved to be a steal at where they got him. He'd be a nice player for the rebuilding Kings. Or a nice bench player, I should say. The actual pick, Harry Giles, power forward center, Duke. 21, Oklahoma City Thunder, Zach Collins, power forward center, Gonzaga. Collins has showed some improvement as the season's gone on after a slow start. Collins would be a nice big off the bench for the Thunder. The actual pick, Terrence Ferguson, shooting guard, Australia. 22, Brooklyn Nets from the Washington Wizards. TJ Leaf, power forward, UCLA. With Jared Allen off the board, the Nets take another big in Leaf. Leaf has shown versatility coming off the bench for the Pacers team. That's been surprisingly good this season. The actual pick, as I mentioned, Jared Allen, center, Texas. 23, Toronto Raptors from the Los Angeles Clippers via the Milwaukee Bucks. Jonah Bolden, power forward from Serbia. Bolden showed a ton of promise, not just in the summer league this past summer, but in the overseas which makes him an interesting draft and stash prospect. Bolden would have made so much sense for the Raptors as a future bench player, and this would be a very Raptors-like pick. The actual pick, OG Anaby, small forward, Indiana. 24, Denver Nuggets from the Utah Jazz. Justin Patton, center, Creighton. Patton hasn't played this season due to his offseason foot surgery. The Nuggets are a team that can afford chances at this point, and Patton is worth a try here to see if he could come back and be a backup big for the Nugs. The actual pick, Tyler Lydon, power forward, Syracuse. 25, Philadelphia 76ers from the Toronto Raptors via the Orlando Magic. Harry Giles, power forward, center from Duke. The Sixers can afford to take chances late in this draft, and they try it here with Giles, who hasn't played this season. Giles probably would have been a lottery pick if his injuries didn't hold him back. The actual pick, Anjez Pakanakis, power forward center from Spain. 26, Portland Trailblazers from the Cleveland Cavaliers. Dylan Brooks, small forward, Oregon. Brooks has proven to be a nice player on a terrible Grizzlies team. Brooks will probably help the Blazers and would have possibly started for them down the road. The actual pick, Caleb Swanigan, power forward, Purdue. 27, Los Angeles Lakers from the Boston Celtics via the Brooklyn Nets. Justin Jackson, small forward, North Carolina. Jackson hasn't found his shot yet, although he has room to grow as a player. If he involves like he involved in Carolina later in his college career, he could have been a backup for Brandon Ingram. In theory, the actual pick, Kyle Kuzma, power forward, Utah. 28, Utah Jazz from the Houston Rockets via the Los Angeles Lakers. Tyler Lydon, power forward Syracuse. Lydon's been a nice bench player for the Nuggets this season, but has had ups and downs like all rookies do. Lydon could have been a nice bench piece for the Jazz as well. The actual pick, Tony Bradley, power forward center, North Carolina. 29, San Antonio Spurs. Anzez Pacagianis, 
power forward center from Spain. This feels like a classic Spurs pick, an international big man picked by the Spurs that probably turns into a steal from where he was selected. The actual pick, Derek White, point guard, Colorado. 30, Los Angeles Lakers from the Golden State Warriors via the Utah Jazz. Frank Mason the third point guard, Kansas. Mason probably will be higher if I do another redraft in a year from now. Mason would be a nice backup to Lonzo Ball in this case. The actual pick, Josh Hart, shooting guard, Villanova. That's my 2017 NBA redraft. I'll be back tomorrow with recapping the Elite Eight and picking Sunday's Elite Eight games, recapping Women's Week 16, picking the Women's Elite Eight games for Sunday, recapping tonight's NBA action and picking the NBA games for Sunday as well as other news that breaks. And I'm going to do an MLB redraft on Sunday's podcast as well. I hope you guys have a nice day.